All right, so problem 1125. <coughs> Carry out the following conversion. 1.26 atmospheres to one torque. Well, there's 760 tor for every one atmosphere. And so I would like to know in tors what I'm going to get. So there's one atmosphere, 760 tor, and it's 1.26 atmospheres. So 1.26 times 760. All right, so I'm getting 957.6 tor. Um, 958 tor is what it's going to be with the significant figures. Double so check that one, 1125. <coughs> 958 tor. 740 tor to atmosphere. So 7, uh, sorry, this is ATM here. 740 tor, 1 atmospheres, 760 tor. 740 divided by 760. 0.97 atmospheres. C, 738 tors to millimeter of mercury. Uh, one tor is one millimeter of mercury, so that's 738 millimeter of mercury, 1125. Double check there. Uh, where are we at? 738, yeah. Uh, D, 1.45 pascals. 1.45 times 10 to the third. Pascals, and we're going to tour, right? So, oh, kilopascals, 1.45 times 10 to the third. No, 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 sorry, that was, I was looking at 126, so it's just PA. All right, 1.45 times 10 to the third pascals per tour. I don't remember how many pascals there are in a tour. So in um, <coughs> 760 tours are 101,325 pascals. All right, so 1.45 times 10 to the third, that's all it is. 1.45 times 10 to the third divided by 101.323 times 760. So 10.87 tor. All right, let's double check that one. 11.25, 10.9 tor, right? Okay, 10.27. That's a nice way to start chapter 11. Eleven twenty-seven. what is the pressure in tor of each of the following? 0.329 atmospheres. So 0.329 times 760. 250 tor. Um, 0.46 atmospheres. 0.46 times 760. 350 tor. So 250 tor and 350 tor. 1127. 250 and 350 tor. 1129. An open-ended manometer. An open even open-ended manometer containing mercury was connected to a vessel holding a gas at a pressure of 720 tor. The atmospheric pressure was 765 tor. Sketch a diagram of the apparatus showing the relative heights of the mercury in the two arms of the manometer. What is the difference in heights of the mercury expressed in centimeters? Okay. So 
So 720 torr. So here's a vessel that has the gas at 720 torr and the atmosphere. Oh, it's got to be a thinner tube. Otherwise, it doesn't look good. All right, so the 720 torr is going to be low, higher than the 760 torr. Seven, what is it? 750. So this is out here. The atmosphere is 750 torr for this experiment. Oh, 765, sorry. And inside it was 720, right? Okay, so this I'll draw black. This is the mercury in here, right? And millimeters of mercury, this is where we get the term millimeters of mercury, the difference in millimeters of mercury. So this is 720, this is 765, so there's 45 millimeters different or 4.5 centimeters different. So what is the difference in heights? 11.29 should be 4.5 centimeters. Four point five centimeters. All right. Eleven thirty one an open ended manometer was connected to a flask containing a gas at an unknown pressure. The mercury in the arm open to the atmosphere was sixty five millimeters higher than the mercury in the arm to the flask. Or to the so we have this again, and then there's some sort of a pressure in here that we don't know. This is 1131 now. The mercury in the open, open to the atmosphere is 65 millimeters, or 6.5 centimeters, 65 millimeters. All right, that's the difference. So here's the black mercury and silver mercury. Uh, 31. The atmospheric pressure is 748 torr. In this case, 748 torr. And then we want to know what's here, right? Well, the difference here, this has to be higher, 748 plus 65. Each millimeter of mercury is one torr. So 748 plus 65, 813. So the inside has to be 813. What is the pressure of the gas in the flask in torr? 813 torr. So that's 1131. So the answer is 813 torr. Oops. 813. Okay, 1135. 255 milliliters, uh, volume 725 torr, right? And the question is, what is the, what volume will the gas occupy at 365 torr? So volume and pressure are inversely proportional. Therefore, as volume goes up, pressure has to go down, right? So this is the relationship between these two. 255 milliliters volume, 725 torr. And we take this, multiply them together, divide by 365. So 255 times 725 divided by 365. And the new volume will be 506 milliliters. All right, so this is our initial volume. This is our initial pressure. This is our second pressure, and then we determined that this value was 506. So that's 1135. All right.
Good. So 1137. All right, a gas has a volume of 3.86 liters at 45 degrees Celsius. What will the volume of the gas be if its temperature is raised to 87 degrees Celsius? We know the gas volume is supposed to increase, and maybe we don't remember the equation. Um, first of all, we have to convert these to Kelvin because it's a linear relationship with Kelvin. With degrees Celsius, you go into negative range, and that messes up the linearity of it. So, 45 converted to Kelvin. 45 plus 273 is 318, so this is 318 Kelvin. 87 uh, plus 273, 360, degree, uh, 360 Kelvin. All right, so 360, there we go. So, is 3.87 liters at 318 Kelvin. So uh, temperature and volume, right? As temperature goes up, volume goes up. So as volume goes up, so that should be like this, right? So it's, it's linearly related. So as volume goes up here, this volume has to go up. As temperature goes up, this temperature has to go up, right? So Let's see, is that right? 3.86 liters, temperature 2, 360. So 360 times 3.86, this is a 360 down here, 3.86 here, divided by uh, the other temperature, 318. So 4.37 liters should be the volume of the gas. This is 1137. 1137, 4.37 liters. Okay, number 39. A sample of a gas has a pressure of 855 torr at 285 Celsius. To what Celsius temperature must the gas be heated? To double its pressure if there's no change in volume, if there's no change in the volume of the gas. 854 times 2. So we're going up to 1708. 854, 1708. And temperature and pressure again are linearly related. So if you have pressure over temperature, P1, T1, that'll equal to P2, T2. And if we want the pressure, and again, there's no volume involved, and they I indicated that, reminded us of that, that the volume is constant. So if we have initial pressure, this is uh, torr, and the temperature was 285 plus 273, or 558 Kelvin. And we want to know what what temperature here, what temperature in Kelvin, we have to raise it to, to get it go from 854 to 1708, right? And we see as this goes up here, this value has to go up here. So this is the correct equation because we know that as you increase temperature, pressure is going to increase as well. So 1708 times 558 divided by 854, right? So we have 1116 Kelvin, or probably, let's see, how many significant figures, maybe just 1120 Kelvin, 1139, 1139, 843 Kelvin, oh wait, oh, we have to go back to, so we have to go back, they wanted it in degrees Celsius, so this is Kelvin, that's equal to 843 degrees Celsius, so that's right. Okay. To what Celsius temperature? Yep, they asked us that. So, okay. 1041. A sample of helium at a pressure of 745. 1141. A sample of helium 
at a pressure of 745 torr and in a volume of 2.58 liters. 745 torr, pressure, and liters. 2.58 liters. Okay. 2.58 liters. This is our torr. All right. Was heated from 74, 24 to 75. What volume of the container expanded to 2. Point, what the volume of the container expanded to 2.8 liters? So this is pressure, volume, and then temperature is down here. 75, 24 to 75, so 24 plus 273, 297. And this is going to be equal to 293, or 273 plus 75, 348, 348, and the new volume is 2.81. So we have to solve for this value here. And that's the pressure, right? And the question is, what is what is the final pressure in tor of the helium? Alright? So 745 times 2.58 divided by 297 times 348 divided by 2.812. All right, so I'm getting 800 torr. And that makes sense because the temperature increased. Okay, so we're looking at 1141, 801 torr. Yeah, 800.9, so it's actually 801. All right, 1143. What must the new volume of a sample of nitrogen in liters what must be the new volume of sample of nitrogen in liters? If 2.68 liters, that's 745 torr. 745 torr again? 2.68. 745 torr, 2.68 liters. And 24 degrees Celsius is heated to 375 degrees Celsius. Well, we have to get this in Kelvin. 24 plus 273 is 297, and it's going to 41. No, we're on 43 now. 43. It's going from 24 to 375. So if we take 648. And what's the final volume that we're looking for? Oh, we're looking for the new volume. If the final pressure changed to 765. 765 is the final pressure, and this is the, the temperature in Kelvin. So, if we look at this, we have pressure 1 Volume 1 over temperature 1, equaling pressure to volume 2 over temperature 2. Alright? Okay, this is from the last problem there. Let's see here. 745 divided by 297 Kelvin. So this is a tor divided by Kelvin. 745 divided by 297 times 2.68 times 648 divided by 765 and so I'm getting 5.69 liters for 1143 5.69 liters for 1143 yep okay <laughs> 1145 a sample of argon with a volume of 6.18 liters, a pressure of 761, and a temperature of 20 expanded to a volume of 9.45 and a pressure of 373. What was the final temperature? Um, V1, P1, T1 equals V2, P2, T2. Right? So the sample of argon with a volume 6.18 6 is the liters. 
pressure 761. Temperature 20, 375 or 395 Kelvin, right? Oh, 275, 270, 273, so 293, 293,000, okay, um, expanded to a volume of 9.45, the final pressure was 373, and what's the final temperature in degrees Celsius? So this will give us Kelvin, then we have to subtract 273 degrees Celsius. So we got 6.18 times 761 divided by 293 divided by 9.45 divided by 373. And then that's going to give us our value, which is 0.0045537. And that's going to equal 1 over our degree Kelvin, because Kelvin's on the bottom. So if we take the inverse of that value, where is my inverse button? Can't find it, but I'll just raise it to the negative one. Oh. Negative one, there we go. So I'm getting 219 Kelvin, and I subtract 273. So I'm getting negative 53.4 degrees Celsius. Okay? So I took the inverse of this value, and then um, minus 273 to get the temperature. So, 1145 minus 53 degrees Celsius. All right. 47. Ideal gas line. What would be the value of the gas constant R in units of milliliters tor per mole per Kelvin? Milliliters tor per mole per Kelvin. So we have to look at the gas constants. Where are the gas constants? Point zero eight two one and that's in point zero eight two one. Let's do this over here. That's in liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. All right, and the question is. What is the value of the gas constant R in units of milliliters tor per mole Kelvin? So I want to have milliliters tor per mole Kelvin. So the moles in Kelvin are on the bottom already. So for every one liter, I have 1,000 milliliters. And for every one atmosphere, I have 760 tor. So and that should do it for us, right? Because liters will cancel out, atmospheres will cancel out, we'll let the milliliters tour over mole Kelvin. So 0 0.0821 times 1,000 times 760, and it should be 62396, or 6.24 times 10 to the fourth. Yeah. Okay, what number are we at? 1147, double check in the back here. Uh, 6.24 times 10 to the fourth. Okay. 11.49. What volume in liters does 1.36 grams of O2 occupy at 20 degrees Celsius and 748 tor? All right. PV equals nRT. That's our ideal gas law. R is in. So here, what are they asking us for in TOR? So point zero point zero eight two one is liter atmospheres per 
mole Kelvin, all right? So, what volume in liters does 0.136 grams of oxygen occupy at 20 degrees Celsius and 748 Tor? So, if we have 0.136 grams of oxygen, we have to convert that to moles of oxygen. If we want to use this um, R value, R equals here 0 0.0821. If we want to use this R value for this equation, then we have to make sure that our N is in moles, number, number of moles of gas, T, temperature is in Kelvin, um, pressure is in atmospheres, and volume is in liters. <coughs> and they're asking us for the answer, in uh, the answer for the volume. 1.36. So if I have 0 0.136 grams of O2, well, there's 32 grams of O2 for every one mole of O2. So that'll tell me how many moles of O2 I have. 0.136 times, or divided by 32. 0.00425 moles of O2. So that'll be able to go in for our N, 0 0.00425, that's in moles. Um, our R value, 0 0.0821. Temperature, what do they say the temperature is running 1149? The temperature is 20 plus 273, 293. Volume is gonna be here, we can divide this by the pressure which is given to us in 748 Tor. So if we 748 Tor, and we know that for every 760 Tor is one atmosphere, this will tell us how many atmospheres of pressure we have. So we take our 748 divided by our 760, and that's our atmospheres. Okay? So 0 0.00425 times 0 0.0821 times 293 divided by 0 0.9842. Um, I'm getting a volume of 0 0.104 liters. Volume in liters, that's what they're asking for. So 1149.104 liters. Okay, 11.51. What pressure in Tor is exerted by 10 grams of oxygen in a 2.5 liter container at 27 degrees Celsius? 10 grams of oxygen, 10 divided by 32, that's 0.3125 moles of oxygen. 0 0.0821 is going to be our constant for R. Temperature. Or 1151, what does it say it is? 27 plus 293? 27 plus 273. 27 plus 273. 300. Kelvin, 300 Kelvin. Uh, and we want to know what pressure, and the volume is 2.5 liters. All right, so we brought pressure underneath and divided it by the pressure. So we have 300 times 0 0.0821 times 0.3125 divided by 2.5. And so I'm getting 3.08, and this should be in atmospheres. And what's the question? Question in Tor. So they want it in Tor. So one atmosphere is 760 Tor. So this would be in Tor. So that value times 760, and I'm getting 2.34 times 10 to the third Tor. 7, 1151, 2,342. Good. 1153. A sample of carbon dioxide has a volume of 26.5 milliliters at 20 degrees Celsius. 
how many grams of carbon dioxide are in the sample. So PV equals NRT. We're going to be solving for N. A sample of carbon dioxide has a volume of 26.5 milliliters or 0 0.0265 liters. 0 0.0821 is the arc value we're going to be using. So we have to remember that it's in liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Okay, so this is the value that allows us to correspond, correlate all of these values together. All right. So that's our volume, and our pressure is what? 624 torr. So 624 torr, there's 760 torr for every one atmosphere. So 624 divided by 760. That's going to be 0.821. So this is our pressure. 0.821 atmospheres, pressure, volume, and that equals. Now we can divide this left side by RT, so we'll put our R down here and our temperature here. So we have N on the right. Um, we're looking for our R value, we know, 0.0821, and our temperature now, 20 plus 273 is going to be 293. All right, again. 293. Okay, so this is going to be an answer in N, so we have 0.821 times 0.0265 divided by 0.0821 divided by 293. So I'm getting N of 9.045 times 10 to the minus 4. And we want to know how many grams that is. Well, this is moles of carbon dioxide. So we multiply that by 44, because there's 44 grams for every mole. So I'm getting 0 0.0398 grams. 0 0.0398 grams. 1153.0398 grams. <coughs> okay. 1155. Okay. To three significant figures, calculate the density in grams per liter of the following gases STP. Uh, three significant figures calculate the density in grams per liter. Okay, so at STP, the volume of a gas is 22.4 liters. So one mole of a gas, right? So at STP, one mole of a gas has a volume of 22.4 liters. So if we have C2H6, that mass is going to be 24 plus 6, 30 grams per mole for ethane. Ethene. Oh, ethane, yeah, ethane. So, ethane. We have 22.4 liters, because we have one mole of this stuff, and one mole of it is going to have a mass of, what did I say? 12 times 2. 24, 30. So there's 30 grams for every 22.4 liters. 30 divided by 22.4. So 1.34 grams per liter for 1155A. The next one Nitrogen gas, 14 times 2, 28, divided by 22.4. So that's 1.25 grams per liter. Chlorine gas, 35.4 times 2, 70.8, 
divided by 22.4 liters. So this is kind of an easy problem, right? All we're doing is we're taking the mass of one mole of the material, because we know one mole will have this volume at STP, standard temperature and pressure. Okay? So 30 grams is the mass of one mole of ethane. 28 grams is mass of one mole of nitrogen gas. 70.8 is the mass of one mole of the mass of one mole of chlorine gas, 35.4, 5 times 2, let's see, 35.45 times 2, 70.9. Okay, and 70.9 divided by 22.4 is uh, 3.17 grams per liter. And then the last one is carbon and fluorine is 19, right? 19 times 4 plus 12. 88 divided by 22.4. So that's 3.93. And this is for letter D. A, B, C, and D. Okay, we can double check those. 1155. Uh, one point, wait, did I miss one? 3.17, that's right. Let's see, we got 1.34, 1.25, 3.17, and the last one I got 3.93. What did I do wrong? CF4. Carbon, 19, CF4, CF4, F4, F19 times 4, 76 plus 12, 88 divided by 22.4, right? 3.93. Like steak in chapter number 1155, 1155D, 1 1.78 says, so 1155, oh, there's the problem, I skipped down to 1156, <laughs> argon, argon, 36.95. Divided by 22.4. Oops. So I got 1.65. All right. So I was looking at CF4, which is the number 1156. So it's argon, and the answer is 1.65. Is that what we got in the back? 1155. No. What's argon? 36.95, 36.95 divided by 22.4, 36.95. D, argon, argon, mass of, oh, 39.95. Classes aren't good enough. 39.95 divided by 22.4. That's 1.78. Is that what it was? 11.55. 1.78. All right. Poor fiend. Okay. All right. So, 1157, the density in grams per liter does oxygen have at 24 degrees Celsius and 742 torr. Well, N is the moles of material. And moles can be derived by taking the grams the mass and dividing it by the grams per mole, right? This is equal. This is the same as taking the mass of your um, sample, dividing it by the molar mass of the material. So I can rewrite the equation, replacing moles can be gotten by taking the mass of the material and dividing by the molar mass, which is grams per mole, right? So that this divided by that is the same as inverting and multiplying, which would cross out grams and leave it with moles. So we can rewrite this 
pressure volume equals grams over grams per mole and R T and then we can rearrange everything so the grams per mole comes over here pressure times grams per mole which is the molar mass equals grams and we're going to bring volume over here grams per volume now that's going to be the density of the gas R T all right so we've rewritten our ideal gas law by replacing moles with grams per grams per mole, which is the same as the mass over the molar mass. And then we can get the density if we rearrange the equation slightly. All right, and we did that by breaking our grams per mole over here, multiplying it by pressure, taking the volume and dividing it on this side. And this unit right there is going to be our density. So 1157 is asking for the density of oxygen have a 24 degrees Celsius. So we take 273 plus 24, 297. 97 times 0.0821 times the density in grams per um, liter and then the pressure at what's that say 742 torr 742 torr oh but we have to convert that to atmospheres if we're using this 0.0821 because 0.0821 is mole no um liter atmospheres per moles Kelvin, right? All right, so pressure is in 742 uh, torr. We need to convert that. atmospheres, so 742 divided by 760, 0.9763 atmospheres, that's our pressure, and our volume moved over there with uh, grams, okay, um, now we need right here, we need the molar mass of this, and this is what chemical again? Oxygen have what density is oxygen? O2, so this is 32, 32 grams per mole. All right, so if we take this value here, 0.9763 times 32 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 297, 1.28, 1.28 grams per liter, and that should be the density of that gas. Let me double check here 1157. 1.28 grams per liter. Okay. 11.59. At 780, no, 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 11.59. A chemist isolated a gas in a glass bowl with a volume of 255 milliliters of 25 a temperature of 25 degrees Celsius and a pressure in the bowl of 10 torr. The gas weighs 12.1 milligrams. What is the molar mass of the gas? Okay, so 0.255 liters, right? And if we take the volume times the molar mass, which is grams per mole, that will equal, what do we have on the other side there? Um, oh, that's cool. I can't remember now. PV equals NRT, and this N is going to be replaced with grams over grams per mole. And so, oh, how many grams of gas? So this is, oh, right. So now in this case, we want to identify the grams per mole. So we can use the equation like this PV. Divide by R T, multiply by or divide by grams, and if we flip that, so R times the temperature times the grams of the gas, and that is going to equal one over the grams per mole. So if we want to flip that, we'll have R times the temperature times the grams over pressure and volume, and that will equal grams per mole. 
All right, so this is the equation that we can use to identify the grams per mole of the gas, 1159. And yes, so the volume is 0.255, that's liters, 0.255 liters. The pressure is 10 torr, so 10 divided by 760, that's 0.0131. Uh, pressure 0 0.0131 atmospheres. R is 0 0.0821. Temperature, what's the temperature? It says 25, so 273 plus 25, 298. And then the grams of the material is 0 0.0121 grams. All right, so that's grams. All right, so 0 0.0821 times 298 times 0 0.0121 divided by 0 0.0131 divided by 0 0.255, and the, we're getting 88 gram, 88.6 grams per mole. All right, so let's see, 11.59, is that right? 88.6. 2 grams per mole. Why did we only get 88 point, why did we get 88.6? What did we do wrong? 0 0.0121. That's right for the grams. 25 plus 273, 298. Um, 255 milliliters. 0.255 liters. 10 tor divided by 760. Huh. Well, close enough. It might have been because you're supposed to add not 293 but 273.15. So, <coughs> all right, 1159, 1161. How many milliliters of oxygen are required to react? completely with 175 milliliters of butane in the volume of, if the volume of both gases are measured at the same temperature and pressure. All right, how many milliliters of oxygen are required to act with 175 milliliters of protein, propane, uh, butane? So we have 175 milliliters of butane, C4H12, no, C4H10. C4H10, 175 milliliters, and the question is, if it's at the same temperature and the same pressure, then the, mole, the gas ratio, they're both gases, same temperature, same pressure, as described in the problem and given to us in the, the chemical formula there, then there's going to be two The volumes of gas that there are are going to be in the ratio of 2 to 13 as described in the equation. So we're going to have for every 2 milliliters of C4H10, there's going to be 13 milliliters of O2 gas. So this can tell us how many milliliters of oxygen are required by taking our 175 divided by 2 times 13. So 1137.5 milliliters of oxygen gas. All right, so again, the idea is uh, 114. The idea is that when everything is at the same, when two gases are at the same temperature and same pressure, equivalent moles are going to have equivalent volumes, right? Okay. Propylene reacts with hydrogen under pressure to give propane, according to that following reaction. How many liters of hydrogen at 764, 740 torr and 24 degrees Celsius react with 18 grams of propylene? So if I have 18 grams of propylene, C4 
C3H6, 18 grams of C3H6. So 18 grams of C3H6, and I need to convert that to moles because we use the equation, the equation is a mole to mole ratio of gaseous molecules, not a grams to mole ratio. So for every 12 times 3, 36 plus 6, 42, for every 42 grams of C3H6, I get one mole of C3H6, right? And according, what are, we, what are we solving for here? How many liters of hydrogen? Okay, so how many liters of hydrogen are we going to get? Liters of hydrogen. Well, for every, what's the ratio? One mole of ethylene, or no, propylene, there's one mole of hydrogen. So this is going to tell us how many moles This is going to tell us how many moles of hydrogen gas there are going to be, right? And let's find that out. 18 divided by 42. So that's 0 0.4286 moles of hydrogen gas. Moles of hydrogen gas. And the question is, what's, how many liters are there at 740 torr and 24 degrees Celsius? 740 torr and 24 degrees Celsius. Well, PB equals NRT, R is 0 0.0821 when we are working with moles, which is 0.4286, and degrees Kel or Kelvin, which is 24 plus 273, right? Or, yeah, 297. So 297 here. And the pressure is. Um, 740, 740 divided by 760 equals 0.974. That's our pressure. And the question is, how many liters? So this will be in liters here. This will be our, our volume over here in liters. So if we take point, these here divided by 0.974, we should get how many liters? 0.4286 times. 0 0.0821 times point, or 297 times 297 divided by, all this divided by 0 0.974, and I'm getting 10.73 liters. All right, 1063. 10.7 liters. All right, 1065. How many milliliters of oxygen measured at 27? Okay, so. <coughs> 765. How many milliliters of oxygen measured at 27 degrees Celsius? 654 torr are needed to react completely with 16.8 milliliters of methane measured at 35 degrees Celsius and 725 torr. So, 16.8 milliliters of methylene, methane uh, is how many moles of methane? Well, well let's see, 16.8 milliliters of methane. All right, so we have point, so PV equals NRT for the methane. For the methane volume, we have point zero one six eight. That's the volume, and the pressure is Seven twenty five torr or seven twenty five divided by seven sixty point nine five three atmospheres. So here's our pressure in atmospheres. We're solving for the number of moles, zero point zero eight two one, and the temperature is thirty five plus two seventy three three oh eight Kelvin, right? So this will tell us how many moles of methane we have. So we have 0 0.953 times 0 0.0168 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by point, or not point, but just 308, right? So that tells me that I have 6.33 
2 times 10 to the minus 4 moles of CH4. All right. Now from that we're going to determine how many moles of oxygen gas there are based on the stoichiometry. So we have to balance the equation. CH4 plus O2 going to CO2 plus H2O, right? Is that what the completely react with methane? So completely react, this is how it's going to react. All right, so we have to balance this equation. Is it balanced already? We're going to get two of those, is that right? Two, four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right, one carbon already. One, two, three, four. So we're going to have two, four oxygens on the left. One, two, three, four oxygens on the right. All right, so it's a two to one molar ratio. Twice as much mole, twice as many moles of oxygen. So how many milliliters of oxygen are required? Measured at 27 degrees Celsius. So we're going to use this PB equals NRT now for the oxygen. So this top half with here is for how much methane we had. And um, it's at 27 degrees, so 27 plus 273, 300, <coughs> temperature 300, 0 0.0821 is our R. N is what we're solving for. No, 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 we know N. N is going to be this value, 0.6332 times 10 to the fourth. We're going to multiply that value times 2 because this is how many moles of methane we have, and so that's going to tell us how much we're going to need twice as many moles of oxygen, which is 0 0.001266 moles of oxygen. We need to know the pressure, 654 divided by 670, gives us the atmosphere is 0.976, and then we can solve for the volume, which is going to be in liters. All right. So we have our 0.001266 moles times 0.0821 times 300 divided by <coughs> our 0.97611 right here, which is our um, atmosphere's pressure. And the answer is. 0 0.3195 liters or 319 milliliters. Okay, so in 65 they asked for the answer in milliliters. Uh oh, 36.3. What did I do wrong? 319 milliliters is what I got. Let's see, what did I do wrong? <clears throat> How many milliliters of oxygen measured at 27 degrees Celsius and 654 torr? 654 torr. Oh, I put 654 divided by 670. 654 divided by 760, that's 0 0.860. So the, the uh, pressure here is 0 0.860. So this is the atmosphere. That's the pressure. So let's try that again. 0 0.001266 times 0 0.0821 times 300, right, doing these three things right here, divided by 0.86, and I'm getting 0 0.03626, which is going to be 36.26 milliliters. All right, 1165, 36.3 milliliters, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right, 657. Eleven sixty-seven. Eleven sixty-seven. Calculate the maximum number of milliliters of carbon dioxide at seven forty-five torr and twenty-seven degrees Celsius that could be formed in combustion of carbon monoxide if three hundred point three liters of carbon monoxide at six eighty-three torr and twenty-five degrees Celsius is mixed with. 150 milliliters, 55 milliliters of O2, and 715 milliliters of Tor, and 20, 25 degrees Celsius. 
So we're trying to find out how much carbon dioxide we can expect at 745 torr and 27 degrees Celsius that can be formed by the combustion of carbon monoxide. Now the carbon monoxide first is at 0.3 liters. 0.3 liters. Um, PV equals NRT. So these are our liters of carbon monoxide. 683 torr. So 683 divided by 760. 0.8986 or 0 0.8987, 0 0.8987 atmospheres. So this is our pressure here. This is our volume here. Equals, we're trying to find out how many moles of carbon monoxide we have. Um, 27 plus 273, 300 times 0.0821, and then that's going to be n number of moles, right? So that'll tell us how many moles of carbon monoxide. We have to have the balance equation of carbon monoxide plus uh, oxygen gas going to carbon dioxide, right? Okay, so balance's equation, one, two, three, what is it here? This is carbon monoxide, so we need two carbon monoxides here. That gives us one, two, three, four, and then we can put a two here. That gives us two carbons, two carbons, four oxygen, four oxygen. All right, so there's the, the chemical equation when we need to use the stoichiometry in a bit. Uh, now, that could be formed by the combustion of carbon monoxide. Okay. Did I do this right? This is the carbon monoxide, right? 0.3 liters, 683 divided by 760, that's our atmospheres, 25. Is this 25? I don't think this is 25, no. This isn't 25, so 20, this is 27, which is the temperature of the carbon dioxide. 25 plus 273, right? I have to read the problem there. 298. <coughs> 298. All right, so this is going to tell us how many moles of carbon dioxide we have. All right? So 298, well, let's start over here. 0.3 times 0 0.8986 times 0 0.8987 divided by 0 0.0821 divided by 298. So I'm getting 0 0.01102 moles of carbon monoxide, right? And for every mole of carbon monoxide, we're going to get, well, let's see. Does it, it tells us that how many moles of oxygen we have. So we have to kind of treat this as a limiting reagent problem, right? Because this is how many moles of carbon monoxide we're going to get. Now we have to determine how many moles of oxygen gas we're going to have. And then from that, we'll be able to determine how much moles of carbon dioxide we can get. So we're mixing it with 0.155 liters of oxygen at 715 torr and 125 degrees Celsius. So we have 0.155 liters of oxygen. Um, the pressure is 715 divided by 740, 760.941 atmospheres. We're solving for the number of moles of oxygen gas. Okay, and the temperature is 125 plus 273, 125 degrees Celsius. Convert that to Kelvin, 398 Kelvin. 398 Kelvin here. So this here is going to tell us the moles of, N will equal the moles of oxygen gas, right? So 0.155 times 0.941 divided by 0 0.0821, divided by 398. And the answer is 0 0.004464, and that's moles of oxygen gas.
correct? So, what do we have more of? We have more carbon monoxide, so, and less oxygen gas. So this times two is how many moles of carbon monoxide we can consume, and also how many moles of carbon dioxide we expect to get. So this is our limiting reagent. This is how many moles of oxygen we have. We multiply it by two, and it's not as many, still not as many moles of carbon monoxide as we were providing. So based on the limiting reagent, we know that we're going to get twice as many moles of carbon dioxide as this. So that many moles is 0.008927 moles of carbon dioxide. Okay? That's our moles of carbon dioxide, 0 0.0821. And they give us the conditions for the carbon dioxide. 745 divided by 760. That's 0.980. I've been putting the atmospheres here, so I'm going to put it here again, even though so values pressure is here. And we want to determine, calculate the maximum number of milliliters. So this is going to be in liters. And the temperature at 27, right? 27 plus 273 to 300. All right, so we're going to solve for liters here by taking 300 times 0 0.0821 times the number of moles of carbon dioxide divided by the atmospheres of our pressure, and that should be how many liters is 0 0.224 or 224 milliliters of carbon dioxide. So that's the maximum number of carbon dioxide, 677. What a long problem, 224 milliliters. All right, 669. One liter container was filled by pumping into it one liter of nitrogen at 20 centimeters of mercury and one liter of oxygen at 155 torr and one liter of helium at 0.45 atmospheres. All volumes and pressures were pre measured at the same temperature. <coughs> what was the total pressure inside the container after the mixture was made? All right. One liter container and the pressures are 20 centimeters of 20 centimeters of mercury which is equal to 200 millimeters of mercury and a millimeter of mercury is um, tor so 200 tor 200 tor due to the nitrogen Oxygen is 155 torr, and the helium is 0.45 atmospheres. So if I take 0.45 times 760, 342 torr. So the final pressure is going to be 342 plus 155 plus 200, 697 torr. Okay, 1169, 6, 1169, 697 torr. Okay, so we just add up the pressures, right? 1171, a 22.4 liter container at zero degrees Celsius contains 0.3 moles of nitrogen gas, 0.2 moles of oxygen, 0.4 moles of helium, and 0.1 moles of carbon dioxide. What are the partial pressures of each of the gases in torr atmospheres in R? Twenty-two point four liters. All right. Um, point three moles of nitrogen gas. Point two moles of oxygen gas. Point four moles of helium, and point one. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and hundred. So 
Those are all fractions of one whole mole. What are the partial pressures of each of the gas in tor atmosphere and bars? So at 22.4, one mole of gas at zero degrees Celsius. So this is S standard temperature and pressure, right? 22.4 liters container at zero degrees Celsius. So it's going to take up 22.4 liters. So what are the partial pressures of each? So the question is, what's the pressure? PV equals nRT. 0 0.0821 times the temperature, which is 273, times the moles of gas. There's one mole of gas. The volume is 22.4 liters. So what's the pressure due to this system, due to this mole of gas? And that's 1 times 0 0.0821 times 273 divided by 22.4. So that's 1 atmosphere. All right, so yes, the pressure is one atmosphere, and so the partial, pre partial pressures in <coughs> atmospheres for the nitrogen would be 0.3, for the oxygen would be 0.2, for the helium 0.4, for the carbon dioxide is 0.1, right, in atmospheres. In uh, tor, so the total tor would then be 760 tor, and so 760 times 0.3, for the nitrogen, point, or 228 tor for the nitrogen, which is 0.3 of 760. Okay, 0.3 of 760. Uh, for the nitrogen, 0.2 of 760 for the oxygen, so 760 times 0.2, 152 tor for the oxygen gas. 0.4 for the helium, 760 times 0.4, 304 tor for the helium. For the carbon dioxide, 0.1 or 76 tor for the carbon dioxide. All right, and um, to get these, this, this is going to be the same as millimeters of mercury and our uh, bars, bars, millibars. I've got, I don't, can't remember the conversion for bars. So let's look and make sure for 1171 we have 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.1 in atmospheres, 228, 152, 304, and 76. And then bars, what is the conversion for bars? One point zero one three bars. All right, so one point one one point zero one three times point three will give us the uh, the answer in bars. One point one zero three times point for nitrogen. Uh, point times point. Where are we at? Eleven seventy one times 0.2 will give us the number of bars for oxygen times 0.3 times 0.2 for oxygen, 0.4 will give us the partial pressure of helium and 0.1 will give us the partial pressure in bars. So 1.01, 1 1.013 times 0.3 will give us the bars due to the nitrogen. 1.013 times 0.2 will give us the bars due to oxygen. 1.013 times 0.4 will give us the bars due to helium. 1.013 1 times 0.1 will give us the bars due to carbon dioxide. And you guys can finish that one up.